now it's all about Japan, and I'm very pleased that I have a co-moderator for this panel. Those of you who regularly visit our online platform already know him as an author of articles about the Japanese tech world. He's also a managing partner at Storymaker and the editor of JBIC, Japan Business in Germany, a brand new newsletter format, which you sh should sign up to, and a Björn Eichert, that's his name, by the way, has also put together this panel for us. Um, Björn, uh, great to have you here. But before we introduce our great speakers, um, why don't you tell us briefly why you suggested a panel exactly about this topic, you know, the Japanese way of innovation. Yes, uh, thanks Wolfgang for having me. So, um, so I'm co-running a communications agency called Storymaker, as you said, and uh, this agency is working for technology-driven companies. Uh, and we started working for Japanese clients about seven years ago. And I had been interested very much in Japan before I actually came to Japan for the first time, which was in 2010. And when I came there, I had a very different expectation compared to what I found there, because I had read a lot in the media that Japan is a very old country, aging society, innovation has long been over. Uh, they, the last innovations were the Walkman and the Game Boy and afterwards there was nothing. And uh, the country has very much fallen behind uh, the US, very much behind China. And actually when I came there, this seemed to me like the most modern country I had ever visited. And so I was really interested in that, in that gap between what I read in the European media and what I found there. And so I started to dig deeper. I started to explore companies, technologies, and uh, I found out a lot about Japanese innovation, that it's very different compared to US. It's not disruptive, but it's more evolutionary. It's more for the society. It's more for bringing things together and not for destroying things. And uh, yeah, so I became like more like an expert in that field and I wanted to share my knowledge about it. And so when we started talking about this topic, maybe like a year ago, um, at some time I thought maybe we have to let the people from Japan speak about themselves and like how their Japanese innovation way is, is different. And so that, that is the background. Yes, yeah. uh, and we, we have been talking about this for very long, so I'm pretty, uh, so happy that it happens now. And let's fill this gap that you were talking about, and Björn will introduce our great speakers from Japan, except for one, but he's also half Japanese, let's say. <laughs> uh, he, yeah, he's half Japanese. So I think I have to look into this camera. Yes. Yeah, okay. So um, first of all, um, or like the first speaker I would like to introduce is Hiroshi Sugie of uh, Mitsubishi Electric. Um, Mitsubishi Electric is um, like a global technology company that is active in many fields. Uh, like they told me they are active like from outer space to the home and I thought this is a very nice description. So they work in space technology as well as in consumer and home electronics. Um, then I would like to introduce um, Kaz Oki. Uh, I can see him here. Uh, he's the <laughs> he's the founder of Mui. Mui is a company uh, that is uh, active in the field of calm technology, and I think the expression alone tells us that there's something different going on here. Um, then I introduce uh, Boris. Hi, Boris. Uh, Boris Jitsukata of Goodpatch, um, a design company from Japan uh, that actually started in the uh, Tokyo stock market um, during the coronavirus crisis, which is a very interesting story behind that. And um, last, I want to introduce Takashi Kudo. Hi, Takashi. Um, he, uh, yeah, already had a long speech in the video that we saw before, and I'm really happy to have all of you here. And I think one thing I have to mention is, uh, that Kaz and Takashi are joining from uh, Japan and it's after midnight there. So uh, we are very happy that they agreed to, to join here at this very late hour. Yeah, thanks for staying <laughs> up uh, for us uh, for so long. That's great. Um, I start with the, with the first question to all of you guys. Um, could you name us 
an innovation from Japan that could only have been created there and made it into the world. Um, and maybe each of you has an example for us. And um, Kaz Oki, okay, maybe we start with you. Um, what's an innovation made from Japan that could not have happened in Europe or the US? Uh, <coughs> can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hello. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, um, it's a uh, good question, difficult, but I would say like something like uh, uh, food, like a lamb, for, for example, like a ramen noodle is very like an original, like a Japanese, like a style food, but it's actually originated from China, but it's totally different. So we we did like a similar thing for like a tempura or other food, you know, from oh. outside of country. So that that's a, like a, you know, I, I just suggest I, I just like mention like a very uniqueness of like a Japan innovation. Great. Let's why not, why not start with food, um, Boris? Maybe you want to add something. <laughs> Yeah, sure. I think I, I was thinking of two things. Um, one innovation that, that I love about Japan is definitely the wash lab toilets. Um, I think everybody who got used to it cannot go back uh, to normal toilets. Uh, I'm talking about those heated seats uh, with a fully functioning um, water uh, sprinkling system and uh, even like some uh, air drying, um, you know, uh, ventilation system to, to try again. I said it's awesome and everybody knows what I'm talking about. I see a lot of smiles, um, but yeah, there is even great movies about it. Um, and uh, yeah, I love, I love, I love washlets. And another one that I was thinking of was uh, maybe that a really nice little cute idea is the Japanese pregnancy badge, um, which ladies can carry that um, are pregnant and then they are entering a subway and they don't need to tell anybody, hey, look, I'm pregnant, but they actually have a little badge on the on their purse and um, people see that and then they make space for you. Maybe you help you out. It's a very nice way of a very subtle kind of uh, Japanese example of an innovation, I would say. Great, thanks. Takashi, do you also have an innovation from Japan that could only be from Japan? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Excellent. Uh, I have two. It's uh, one is a uh, washer it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, it's it is quite hard question. It's in uh, as uh, Kazan said. It's in you know, like uh, at least it's in uh, in team labs. It's uh, our office in Tokyo right now, but it, uh, at least me personally, I believed it, uh, anything can create from this anywhere. And especially it's after internet, it, uh, and especially it's like a digital, like, ideas. It is not so much bound by it in a space, and of course, in like if I made a sample as team labs, and you know, we are lucky because it's you know like you now we met some people, friends in universities, and uh, that is all the start of the team labs. But it's you know like any culture and its creativity is there is a possibility from the you know from anywhere, and it is not. It's bound by it, uh, any country, and it's. I'm not uh, against of it's any like a political issues, but it's me just personally. It's an, uh, I really don't care about uh, boundary or it's a country. <laughs> but I very much appreciate of this wash it and it's my passport. Okay, and Hiroshi, now maybe you got concrete innovations from Japan that can only be from Japan for us. Oh, yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. 
Okay. Okay. We innovated a high quality toaster. Would you start our movie, please? Oh yeah, we, we have a video. Okay, okay we yes. start with this one. It's it's probably the most fancy toaster that you'll ever see yeah, in please. your life. Um, maybe you, we could we could see the video now. <laughs> Thank you. There it is. And Hiroshi, please explain us. <laughs> yeah, uh, we innovated this uh, high quality toaster uh, that can bake only one toast, but very deliciously. It's expensive, 250 euro, but it sells well. It might have an excessive quality, but leads, I think it leads to the heart of Japanese hospitality, omotenashi. Okay, thank you. A 250 euro toaster for only one uh, piece of toast, but it looks pretty delicious, right? Yes, that's great. So. Um, I think what is interesting yes. here is yes. um, that the kind of innovation that we that we heard about. I mean, it started with food and it ended with food. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, food innovation is definitely something, uh, and also uh, it all had to do with like feeling well, like the the well-being, etc. While a lot of the innovation that we that we hear about from the US or from China for example are more like disruptive uh, innovations that are innovations where a lot of people don't feel very comfortable about or like feel this is something that I need to be afraid of somehow so my question to the participants of this panel would be um, like how do you think the way of Japanese innovation and how it involves society in Japan um, is different to the uh, innovation approaches that we know from China or that we know from, um, from the US, for example? So maybe Boris, as somebody who is not Japanese but lived in Japan for a long time, maybe you can build a bridge for us here. Boris? Oh, um, yeah, thank you. I had to put up on my microphone. I think um, one thing that I noticed is there's so many things that are on a top level um, done in, a, in PAN. Um, and that could be in various areas. It could be denim, it could be coffee, it could be technology. And uh, all of these things are um, done in a a uh, kind of degree of perfection that is very difficult to find anywhere else in the world. And uh, those things are often actually um, rebuilt or picked up somewhere else. Um, like Japan didn't invent denim, but they're making the world's best denim. Japan didn't invent um, maybe ramen, but they're making the best ramen in the world. And, uh, and, uh, and so on and so on. So. Um, Japan didn't invent snowboards, but they're making some of the best snowboards in the world. And uh, this kind of like uh, bringing it to another level, I think it's very unique. And this is what I, I love a lot. And I find constantly different areas uh, where I, I see this pattern. Um, taking something, making it perfect. Maybe someone wants to add something. Kaz, what about, what about you? Do you think there's a, I know you've been around at many trade shows at CES, so you saw what companies around the world are doing. Is there a Japanese way of innovation that leads to this kind of products that we talked about? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, I, I, yeah, we. You know, I, I am not re representative of Japanese Japanese, you know, person, but there, like, uh, you know, ba based up on my like experience, I <clears throat> usually saw that like a you know best way of mimicking in some japanese product but also we you know somehow like create very unique you know out of like a, a modification uh you know from like origin origins so there, there is uh i think like a good mixture you know in between like a in like invention and uh, like a continuous modification for 
the uh, like a you know pro product like a creation, but also uh, you know we you know a little bit different from like uh, Boris's comment, but there uh, in traditionally like we Japanese uh, you know have like a you know value of like a it's called wabi sabi. It's uh, like a, you know, it's like a mixture of imperfection of uh, out of beauty, or also the like a, you know, uh, please please to uh, have like a, you know, pa passage of time. So it's not you know, it's not com completion of like a beauty. Uh, also, like it's aged uh, with you know times, and the time goes by. But uh, for you know, uh, having those uh, things in, in in our mind is very important to see, you know, what what what's happening, you know, in the seasonal, uh, like a ceremony or like even in like a tea ceremony uh, thing. We saw like a lot lots of those like a wabi sabi mindset. So it's. Uh, like a, I think it's very unique. It's it's hard to uh, explain by you know one word, but uh, like a, you know, we try to uh, modify you know many things from origins, but also you know through that uh, like a process, we we like a find we our like you know ancestors found the way of like a, uh, enjoying or seeing the you know things like a different way you know from like other countries like wabi sabi so it, it's yeah we 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 make you know product you know ba based our product of mui is based upon like a some mindset from like wabi sabi yeah um takashi what what do you think about this i'm sure you have a different answer here <laughs> wow, eternal. Thank you so much for the eternal, like, you know, very high. Uh, it's a, um, it one thing is, you know, Timla, uh, it's Japan, it's, it's a, you know, like an island that is, you know, quite affected of it's an our innovation or it's, you know, some kind of creativities, I guess, because of it, it's, you know, uh, one, it's you know at least I believe that it's an, any innovation have been it's created by team or groups. It's it's not only in presence, as uh, Kaz said. It's um, like from its ancestors and it's a hold like in a history and it's a hold over the world, because it's um, I believe that it's an innovation. It's an, just only the stock of its the wisdoms and the knowledge, whoever it have made. And it, we team lab it's also the same. So it's, you know, we started over this in our company and it's a studio in like 20 years ago. And it's what we have done in this 20 years is uh, just try and fail. And what we got is, you know, some kind of knowledge and it's an experiences. And it's uh, something we cannot explain by words. So that is, you know, like almost like uh, same experience from this as my high school student or you know, like you know, we have done it so many fair and it's uh, sometimes success. And it's a, we are not God, so it's, you know, we cannot create from zero to one. So what we can do is, you know, we can research of it in our ancestors or it's, you know, we need to, it's, you know, like an you know, open for it's you know, any other cultures. And it's at least, I believe it's, you know, it's a dividing, it cannot create anything. Maybe it's no, it is, it is work for it like a logic, like it's a business or something. But it's creativity or something. It's we need to open, and it's a. Uh, I believe it's a co-creation. It's you know like in a, one of the answers, and it's a thing says. Mm, the this is you know first part. It's like in a Japan is an island. So, like, even if we want it or not want it, anyway, we are divided by physically. It is by like the huge oceans. 
So that's a one of the reasons it's an if you think it's a Japanese output is unique because of this channel, like you know, we are isolated and the channel, like uh, somehow it's, you know, we are very much, it's, you know, like a you know, co-create of this in our ancestors. And it's, you know, like, I really don't know it's you know, how we could make it you know, a wash red, <laughs> it's, you know, like how it's <laughs> this idea is you know, popped up, but it's, you know, uh, anyway, it's, um, I believe it's, you know, some kind of a, one is in a co-creations is only way to create some things and it's any innovation is it's not from zero to one so it's not what we can do is just we can respect for this and any other people including our data ancestors and it's a we can research of this our cultures and this is not only in japan it's in all over the world everywhere has its like histories and the ancestor made it like super interesting stuff and it's maybe some of them say it didn't work on today's or it's a 20 centuries, but it's a, there is maybe hint for the uh, futures. And uh, I think if you wanna it's innovate like in the Japans and just living on an island and co work with and some others, and it's a respect of your ancestors, maybe you're gonna create all this uh, another wash rate. That is what I think. <laughs> <laughs> You're great. Thank you. Great. So, uh, Hiroshi, what is your opinion about this? So, what do you think is specific about the Japanese way of innovation? So, we Japanese uh, generally are good at uh, small innovation, in other words, modification, but uh, not good at uh, disruptive innovation. So on one reason, uh, because of I'm um, industrial people, uh, we value practicality. So uh, and uh, we think our first market of Japanese uh, domestic uh, market. So. Um, it's another reason Japanese is uh, different from US or China, I think. Mm -hmm. So um, you said, and maybe we can uh, go on with this, that Japanese innovation is maybe not that disruptive uh, as other um, innovations. Might that be a reason why all the major international tech media is mainly talking about stuff from the Silicon Valley or China and Japan, just like Europe, by the way, is um, not so um, not so present in the media. Um, why is that? Is is nothing interesting happening in Japan, or is it uh, that you're not so disruptive and so loud? Um, what, what could be the reason that nobody has Japan on the right, or not nobody, but not, not so many people have Japan on the radar a anymore? Who wants to go first? Or I pick one. Can I continue? Yeah, sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Japanese respect to harmony and uh, don't like people who are different from others. Therefore, uh, usual Japanese are not trained to think differently from others. So in good words, uh, we are aiming to the stack of uh, small innovation. And uh, yeah, sometime uh, we expect global cooperation about uh, disruptive innovation. Boris, um, you, you know both worlds. Uh, what, what would you say? What's the reason for um, the, you know, little noise about Japanese tech? There's, there's so many things that definitely deserve much more recognition, um, also in the internet space. There's a certain, you know, um, humbleness that is um, often standing in the way of uh, Japanese teams. Um, they are not really, they don't believe that what they are doing would be impressive on a global stage. Um, or they cannot admit that. And, and then when you have, I always say when you have 
uh, a room, you know, and there is like a, an American, there is a Japanese, always the American going to be much more present um, in terms of communication. And it always going to be the American who is the louder than the Japanese and, the, and that they have not a problem to say, hey, we are the best in the world. But the Japanese would, would not say this um, uh, until somebody else says that they are the best in the world um, about them. And I think it's generally like um, it needs better international communication skills um, to bring the message across. Here I admire Team Lab. Uh, they are doing this on a really um, top level. And uh, they have been able to break beyond the Japan borders, uh, literally, with borderless and other stuff. And that is something that I would love to see also from other companies. Yeah, so there are uh, some. Okay. So maybe. Yeah, go on. Go on. Hey. Hello? Yes. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh. Okay. I forgot the order. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, but with the leaders, it's, uh, I personally, it's maybe it don't have interest to be its leaders. And it's uh, because it's. I really don't understand it, you know, why people want to be led by the some things or it's someone's and it's uh, because it's, you know, like maybe it's, you know, we are creating some things and it's a, uh, we even, we don't know it's what is a purpose and it's what is the goals. So it's, you know, nobody can lead us to be on in you know, goals. So it's a uh, technical, it's, uh, we don't have it leader or it's we don't need leaders for this in our territory at least because it's all it's in our team labs it's you know our founders or me or it's anybody it's in, we don't have it's leaders and what we're going to do it's you know, we just keep on create some things and uh that is you know like um, talking about some it's team labs itself and if if you think about some it's global leaders it's a logical is the uh, just my opinions, but uh, when uh, the people want to be lead to the goal, it means you know we need a logic. As a logic, it is something we need. We need to explain by words. And uh, as uh, Boris said, also it's a technical. It's we Japanese cannot speak English well. So that is also one of the reasons, maybe. And it's another one is, you know, uh, the logic can make the people to like controlled or it's that people can, it's you know, moved by like logic as like law or it's anything. So that's the reason why it's, we need the logic, but it's a, the personal rates or it's a personal people's individual. It's a, we human beings, it's a, is not logical creatures. We have emotions, and it's you know we are not made up any actions from its logic. It's for example like when I fall in love with somebody's, I'm not it's falling in love with somebody with logic. It's you know I wear it you know these fashions, and everybody wears a different fashions. And uh, Boris, I really like your your yeah, Parker's sweater. I really like it. And it's, you know, the point is, you know, why? Yeah, world famous in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, why you wear that? It's, uh, it's because of this, you know, the reason is, you know, like you like it. And it's, I like your fashions. And that is, you know, hold people's actions on this world. When you buy some things, there is no reason. It's, you know, we cannot explain by words. Like it's, you know, when we laugh, it's also it's we cannot explain it. It's a laughing point by words. If we could, we're gonna kill the laughing point. And it's uh, what I wanted to say is you know we humans is you know completely it's like emotional creatures. But it's a uh, funny thing. It's when we are making the groups, we need a, it's a logic sometimes, and that's the reason why it's we listen it's you know, low. And it's we need to uh, listen to the marketing's logic, business, 
it's you know like that is a games and it's you know like we need some things but it's you know this is a group things so in that case somebody need to explain by words so it's you know it means that leaders so the words and the language it can be it's quite strong weapons and it's uh, as boris said it's uh, somehow it's i don't know reason why but it's you know maybe it's a japanese it's too unique it's a language that's a maybe reason it's we cannot speak english or like naturally it's our voice is it's not super loud <laughs> and it's uh, but anyway it's a uh, from the uh, first question it's an I don't have interest with it uh, to be it's a leader or not. I just want to, we just want to make it an art and it's uh, if we could reach to okay. the people's heart, that is uh, it's, uh, our strongest purpose. Uh, he to, to add something to this, maybe? Thank you, Takashi. Um, um, I'm, like, um, I, I think we, we want to move forward a bit, um, but we all like your sweater. <laughs> and now we, we want to maybe know a bit more about what what you guys are working on. And then um, after that, we all also have question, a question from the audience, I guess, if we still have the time. But first, um, Pjorn. Yeah, we, we want to go a little bit deeper into what each of you is doing. And uh, like we want to start with uh, Hiroshi from Mitsubishi Electric. So uh, you work a lot in AI. And actually, we are hearing a lot about AI from the US, we are hearing a lot about AI from China. Actually, we are hearing something about like an AI war behind, uh, uh, um, between the US and China. And we don't hear that much uh, here in Europe about AI in Japan, but actually you are doing a lot in this space. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more specific about your approach in AI and how is it different from the US and from China? Thank you for the question. Uh, we are developing the compact AI. Uh, compact means uh, uh, practical AI, not uh, com, but uh, uh, analogy of uh, our, our compact AI we call MySat. MySat is not uh, com, but uh, analogy of smart AI. It's an edge type embedded AI uh, that runs with less computation and less memories. We also develop, uh, develop the first training algorithm that does not uh, require a cloud computing. And we developed an automated design tools uh, that can be used without AI expert. We applied them to factory automation, automobile, and uh, surveillance. Maybe I can, I can ask a follow-up question here, because here in Germany, we often discuss about the responsible use of AI. We will actually have a panel later on that. Um, and you say you don't use cloud computing and you don't need that much, um, I guess, personal data sometimes. Um, did you choose this before because of technical reasons or because you thought it's more responsible um, to do as much, as much as possible on the device? Well, the, uh, one reason we select the uh, edge type is uh, um, we are relatively strong at uh, hardware equipment. So the edge type AI uh, has a strong connection to our hardware production. Another reason, yeah, uh, edge type AI is uh, a merit for cost and risk of disconnection the uh, network and also uh, relatively strong to about the security. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Kas, um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about your innovation. So uh, you are working on calm technology and you already said a little bit about this in your introduction, but maybe you can tell us mm -hmm. like what is calm technology, what is your product and why do you need this? 
Uh, yeah. So, yeah, how can I say? So we, we live in the world with devices, you know, with uh, technology. So connected device is now you know, over 20 million, 20 billion devices. However, like uh, we people just like 7.7 7 .7 billion. So how, how, <clears throat> how might we think uh, about our attention, you know, will be like uh, captured by computer, computers, you know, more than number of like humans. So calm technology is the solution to uh, like a, make harmony between like a compute, like a, you know, o overkilled numbers of computers and the human. So however, the computing like technology or computing design is, you know, probably you know their personal computing, the world of personal computing is based upon current computer design. So, you know, but uh, it's a, uh, you know, machine to human, like a one by one uh, design. However, you know, computer is more than our, you know, human numbers. So we, we need to have like a different style of like a computing design. So we, we love is providing the, like a new type of computing design based upon like our first product of like a MUI that wouldn't uh, touch interface uh, for enable like a uh, environmental computing. So like computer is not that uh, like a completion of like a, you know, power of brain or not, you know, our extension body or whatever. It's more like a, you know, a part of our like a lives or, you know, space, like a living space. It's not, you know, it, it's not like a completion of like a power of computing. It's a part of our life. So we design like a, we, we use uh, like a wood material as a part of our like a living space for the smart home and they enable like a smart home controlling or messaging, whatever. Uh, but uh, it's not like everything. So we respect that like, uh, you know, our, our life, like our personal life or family life. So that's the most important, like a technology or computing, it's not some, not, you know, not important more than like our life, our lives. So we, we, we provide calm technology to make harmony between human and computing and uh, to pursue like a better, like a, you know, human lifestyle for like our living space. That, that's our like, approach of calm technology. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and for all of you, the calm technology in the, the wooden uh, device that he's building, he, you can see it in the background of the cast. There's the, the MUI board, the f world's first smart wood uh, with a touch. Uh, it's a touch device, actually. Yes. That, that's it. <laughs> yes. Um, Boris Goodpatch, the company that you're working for, also has offices in Germany now. Um, I wonder if you work for with your German teams here for German customers, is there still a Japanese philosophy behind it or are you just um, a German design studio? <laughs> hmm. no, good question. Yeah, there's definitely some uh, some DNA uh, which which we have in the uh, German studios in Berlin and Munich, which comes from the Japanese background. Um, but it's difficult for me to exactly grasp what it is. Um, but I think uh, we we just um, we just basically when we took the company here to Germany, we followed a certain blueprint. So we knew that there is a demand for a design firm. That we knew that the design firms can scale uh, like more like a venture. Uh, there's no reason why an agency has to grow slowly. That can grow pretty fast, and then. What I think what we what we are doing a bit different from other design firms is that we think very much about the business side of things. So um, not Tsuchiya-san or myself, um, 
uh, the, you know, um, Tucci has done is the founder of Good Patch. We don't have a design background, um, but we actually come from business context. So we uh, know how important good design is for the business and how it can make um, our partners successful. So, but then our designers, they speak to management and that is something that um, levels up the practice of design. And that, that is something that I think is, is a unique positioning. Thank you. And now uh, think, we have a, our control. We have our control uh, center over there and the light is on. So we have a question from the audience. Um, awesome. Please, yeah. control center. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. And um, yeah, before forwarding uh, my question to you guys, um, I think I can also forward a big thank you for your commitment to join um, so late. So also thank you from, from the audience here. And yeah. <laughs> It's for you. And um, now to the question. Um, Japan seems very focused on developing technology to get from A to B. And Japan has the fastest trains in the world. And there's a lot of work uh, being done on flying cars and drones and so on. But uh, Japan is actually a very small country. Why is that? <laughs> That's a good question. Um... Who has a guess why there's so much uh, mobility technology in Japan, although it's a small country? <laughs> Whoever wants to answer can raise the hand or we pick someone and he has to. <laughs> <laughs> no one? No one dares? It's not a small country, man. <laughs> yeah, that's the first answer. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's right. Who, who oh, was it? Who was it? It was Boris. Um, I just said, like, um, my first reaction was, like, it's not such a small country at all. Um, it is a size, same like Germany, and it has 120 million um, in, in heritage. And then, you know, just in greater Tokyo, there's 38 million people living, so I wouldn't say it's small. Um, but then there is a very small part of Japan which actually can be build cities so um, which can be socialized because there's so much forest and mountains so that the livable space is not, I think just 30 percent of the time any other guesses why there are so many flying taxis and fast trains uh, flying cars of, of fast trains and we all we all admire your trains by, by the way um, if not that's totally fine too <laughs> we build millions of cars and Germany is much smaller. Yeah. Takashi? Yeah, it's just, uh, I, I had very much interested in, in that questions. Uh, why it, uh, at the point of this question, I just wondered, it's, you know, why QRC felt that Japan is uh, small? It's in the yeah, meantime, it's, it's a very, it's, you know, the correct, it's, you know, like, it's a, as I said, it's in a very small island. So if you compare with that, it's like, uh, we are like physically, it's, you know, like divided. So it's, you know, if you compare with the States or it's in a whole Europe, it's, you know, like it's bio, yeah, biography, it's, it's, a, it's very small. It's a small island. It's that one completely agree with that. So it's, you know, uh, that the point of this question is, you know, like why the small is like why, it's in a size why, why of this island. Bring so the, much mobility te uh, technology for getting around, getting from A to B. Oh. Maybe, maybe that is something like where... <laughs> so, so maybe it, that is a question small, where. It's a, not too small. Okay, uh, so maybe that's a question where Hiroshi can help because Mitsubishi Electric is also a lot in mobility. So, so why is um, mm -hmm. Japan mm -hmm. developing so much mobility technology as a country? 
Well, well, it's a difficult question for me, but uh, I feel for automobile, Japan is not so small. I think from, do you know from uh, Tokyo and Osaka, uh, if uh, I must drive, uh, it takes uh, uh, more than half a day, uh, more than uh, 500 or 600 kilometer trips. So um, I think, uh, Japan is not so small for automotive, automobile, but uh, maybe maybe small for airplane, I think. That's all right. We totally, uh, we totally are, are fine with that. Uh, uh, Boris? Boris, yes? Yeah, so I think uh, as a background, I, as I get to understand that question better. So I think it was really about the mobility services and um, and uh, probably ask from a German person and for giving you a bit of a background, um, the German trains are not exactly um, super reliable, um, nothing comparable to what we know from Japan. So I think this is a really, um, uh, this is a context of this question. You don't know how uh, difficult it is to get around with trains sometimes in Germany. Um, and uh, <laughs> here we have the famous example of Japan where uh, the train is actually, the average delay of a train would be even measured in seconds you know, um, per year. And uh, in, in Germany, you can be lucky if a train arrives on time. So this is a bit of a context, yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the German, Japanese trains are just super famous, right? For being functional. Um, now we have a, a question for all of you again. The title of our conference is called, it's pretty big, it's called A New Humanity, but our focus is on technology. Mm -hmm. So maybe each of you could um, tell us from your individual perspective, it doesn't have to be a Japanese or German or any perspective, but your personal perspective, what role should technology play for the future uh, for, of mankind, actually? What do you think? What, what role should technology play for this new humanity? Hiroshi, maybe you want to start? Well, I think future is uh, not pessim pessimistic, but uh, hope, uh, bright, bright future. So I think uh, technology can contribute, uh, change the society better, for example, automation and uh, improve efficiency. So um, we, I believe that innovation can change the world better. Great. Kas, maybe you want to go on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, my, I have like a friend who is, uh, who had learned a lot like a philosophy and he, told me like an interesting thing, uh, like, uh, you know, with AI, like, uh, you know, advanced AIs. So we human will be the, like, uh, uh, philosophian in the Greek era. So using the AI as a slave and we people or, or we human, uh, using our brain for, you know, you know, thinking about like a new philosophy or different type of philosophy, Philosoph like, a, you know, Aristotle or <laughs> Heraclitus or, you know, whoever, you know, in like, uh, uh, in gr great heads of uh, like a Greek philosophy. And so I, 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 you know, I don't agree everything, but uh, like a technology helps a lot, you know, for uh, our life and uh, we could, you know, find out our, like, you know, the value, you know, for, you know, what we need to do, need, need to do done uh, for like other humans or friends or families or community. So that's that, uh, I think, you know, it, it's very opt optimis optimistic, but uh, like a technology could help our, like, uh, you know, harmony for, I don't know, make the better world. 
or like a, uh, I don't know, if our mind mindset will be, you know, uh, directed to, you know, the bad way, you know, maybe, I don't know, uh, who else will leak about it. So yeah, that's, that's my thought. Great, thank you. So Boris, what do you think? What role should technology play for the future of mankind? Yeah, I totally agree with Hiroshi and also what uh, Cass said. So um, the design should be um, taking away the fear rather than it um, sparks fear and uh, should be really um, optimistic point of view. That's what is very natural to, to me as a, as a designer. And I think the, the last few months we have seen really a great um, shift and uh, it feels like mankind is progressing a lot. Um, on many, many levels. And, uh, and that's why it's really exciting. And I would love to keep that kind of pace of, of positive change. Mm -hmm. And then design's job is to kind of put in a human um, factor when it comes to all the technology innovations. And then we start to develop innovations again from a human point of view, not from technology point of view. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Takashi, so where do you see yeah. technology for the future of mankind? Mm, that is super interesting questions and uh, it can be, it's quite weird answers, but uh, it's just my personal opinions, but it's, you know, like as everybody said, it's like technology, it's just only tools and the materials and how to use is, you know, just only for the, it's uh, us and it's uh, for the human, for the futures. Like an island, it's also, it's, and you can make uh, weapons, but in the same time, you can create with, uh, like uh, sculptures. So it's very much, it depends on, you know, uh, the, the material and the tool doesn't have any roles itself and it's you know the creator is going to use it and it's how what kind of things it's you're going to create but it's uh one thing i can say it's you know like um, if we say that technology as like a digitals the digital technology is it's definitely it's a change our mind and uh because of it's you know, one big thing so it's it's made us free from these materials this is you know, quite big things. It's before, it's, it's when we got some kind of ideas and it's when we create something, so we needed the materials. So we are bounded by the materials, but it's a, uh, an essence or it's you know, like a fundamental part of this uh, digital is something that it's even not exist. It is like it's a you know, philosophy or it's a, like an idea itself. And it's, you know, what after that is, you know, like, I'm so sorry, I'm going to speak just only more than three minutes. It's, you know, just only you know, my personal experience, but it's, you know, like, you know, me, myself, like, you know, the English, I cannot understand it. It's, you know, like, you know, me personally, I cannot understand it. What is having the hub, H-A-V-E's. It's, you know, like, somehow I cannot understand this word. It's uh, from my heart. It's uh, like sometimes some people it's ask me it's you know how many kids do you have, and uh, it's uh, I'm father of the two sons. One is in one years old, and the other one is six years old. And it's you know like always I had to answer that it's you know, yeah I have two sons, but it's you know always I feel I don't have them, and it's just my think. And it's like in a movie is you know same meanings maybe, but it's uh, I believe in the human beings cannot have anything, and a hub is just illusions, and it's you know like um, the thing is I cannot have its son and I cannot my wife, and it's you know things is and I can be something I can be in the fathers and I can be the good friends of is my good friends and I can be in you know, one member of this in the team labs and I am the Japanese and it's only I can do is you know, to be and it's you know like the things is like you know, I feel it's you know like we are quite bound by it you know some kind of illusions we can have it is like it's a, 
Lord of the Rings, it's you know, like it's my precious, and it's you know, if you are bound of that image, it's and you're like bound by it's you know, some kind Takashi, of Takashi, th thank to you have so it. much. But, Unfortunately, oh. we are bound by oh. we are it also is, bound by things. Dreams? It's it's the time, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, we, are we don't have time. time. We yeah. don't have time, but we it's are out of time to keep the <laughs> uh, th thank uh, thank you all, everyone so much for uh, for joining us, even from <laughs> Japan, where it's already in the middle of the night. Thank you so much, Hiroshi Takashi, Kas, and Boris for this wonderful panel. Thanks, Bjorn yeah. from Storymaker and JBIC for making this possible and setting this up for us.